Hello there, welcome to Sky News Unplugged. We are the Budget Unplugged edition for this day in April 2009. Exactly what is the Chancellor Alistair Darling going to have in the budget? We're going to find out with my panel of guests. We're here in the Sky News Active Newsroom. We're in touch with you and we want your contributions as part of this uh, program this lunchtime. If you go to the homepage of the website, you'll see that the Cover It Live blog is already in position there, ready to start feeding you information what, what the Chancellor has to say. Your contributions to that blog are absolutely important and once he's sat down we'll be feeding those through into our program and we'll be talking about what you have to say. You can follow us on Twitter today. Uh, Budget Unplugged is the hashtag to use. You can also join us by Skype phone call. We've got a number of people up and down the country who are going to be talking to a little bit later on on the Skype message, getting that sort of cold face feel of exactly what Britain is feeling like. Uh, this is where the program itself is being made. Unplugged? You must be joking. We're the most plugged in program. You're watching around the back here, producer Rob North. Uh, Kevin Donaldson is directing the show and we're going to go into here where another Sky producer, Tim Gatt, is ready to keep us right up to date with what's happening on the blogosphere and online. Now, Tim, good afternoon yeah. to you. Welcome Hi. to Budget Unplugged then. You're going to keep an eye on the websites up and down the yeah. country, right? That's right. Basically, Martin, um, we keep an eye on all the, all the main sites. Let's start on number 10. have got their own Cover It Live blog going on there. Obviously, we know where the viewers of Sky News will be watching. <laughs> yeah, don't go there whenever you do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's um, have a quick look at um, some of the party sites. Labour, interestingly, not bigging up their own Alistair Darling speech. They're going with the Tory line, the dangers in the detail. Interesting okay. that they Labour Party... Made this morning. Interesting. Exactly. Conservatives, slightly more... Um, uh, smaller coverage there. To today's budget reveal a record of failure. As for Liberal Democrats, well... It's pretty much business as usual. All right, but that may change as the afternoon goes on exactly. and once the budget speech is going. Yeah. Because it's the data and those hard facts that we need to find out about. And I know that you've got um, a board here where you'll be keeping those basic facts going. What are those numbers we're looking for, Tim? Firstly, public debt, the big figure we're worrying about. How high will this government debt be? Mm. Last year was 78 billion. That was double it's the prediction. It's going to be more than that, isn't it? Yeah. How much now? Is it going to be 150, 170 billion maybe? A big concern. Rising unemployment as well. Heard 2.1 million today unemployed. Predicted 3 million by next year. Bank bailout. A bit of controversy this morning over the IMF how, and the government clashing over how much it's going to cost. Government reckons 60 million. I got 60 billion, I should say. Mm -hmm. How much more will that cost? And growth forecasts. When will it all get better for us? In time for the election, possibly, next well, year? Well, we need to hear. And I know you're bringing us up to date on all those other measures yeah. that we think might be in the budget, but we'll find out as we go on. We've also got a um, panel of experts coming in from all walks of life who are going to be helping us out. We'll be talking tax a little bit later on. Let me introduce you to two senior political bloggers, senior in their status in the blogosphere. I'm going to just drag this chair along here. They're it's, laughing. It's, it's, I'm bigging you up, it's, guys, it's, here. It's, don't it's laugh. It's when you start calling us veteran that we Oh, all right. You don't want to be a veteran no. just yet. Ian Dale on my left, which is inappropriate, I know. It is <laughs> uh, we've also got Alex Hilton on the right of the frame, uh, just for a change. Uh, Ian, of course, from Ian Dale's diary and other uh, contributions online and to the media. And uh, Alex Hilton, a well known Labour blogger. Labourhome.org, recessmonkey.com. You're everywhere. <laughs> What are you expected to hear today? What do you think we need to hear as a country, Ian? Well, we've heard a lot of it already, haven't we? Because uh, the usual leaks have occurred. I think what we actually need to hear is that the government's getting a grip of public finances, that it's got a plan to get borrowing under control. Because the only way we can get confidence back in the economy is to reintroduce sound money policies. That may sound a bit like Margaret Thatcher. I'm sure Alex will sort of hit on that. But if you're going to get confidence in an economy, the international money markets have got to have confidence in what we're doing and you've got to get public spending under control. I'm looking for public spending cuts. I don't think there will be any, but that's what I, if, if, if I was Chancellor, I'd looking to do. Well, it's interesting, Alex, because they sort of trail the idea of government savings. Does that amount to public spending cuts? It's not quite the same thing, is it? Well, they, they reckon they can find £9 billion in terms of changing their electricity suppliers and that sort of thing and I, I'm not quite sure about that but um, but I think he is entirely wrong in terms of this idea that we must not borrow we must reduce this borrowing at this time so we shouldn't borrow just uh, not to the extent that we're borrowing at this time what we're trying to do is maintain an economy uh, so that, that we can get through this rough patch and then pay it off when when we're out of the rough patch 
uh, when the economy is back in growth. What's your hunch on the timeline here, though? We've got another year of pain, haven't we? Well, but after that, isn't Ian right that he's got to announce today mm -hmm. stuff that he would do, assuming he's still Chancellor, mm -hmm in 2010-11, 2011-12 and so on. Absolutely, it does very much lock in any future government. Uh, we, this is definitely an election budget. Um, it's going to be the last substantive budget before a general election. And I think a lot of this is going to be about drawing the lines between what, what we, the Labour movement, would do uh, and what the Conservative Party would do in power. And they're going to have to stand up and start responding in terms of distinct policies from now on. They're not going to get away with talking about airy-fairy things like compassionate, compassionate conservatism anymore. Okay, guys, plenty more to talk about, I know. And once the information starts flowing, we'll come back to you again. But let's meet some more of our guests. I'm going to just shuffle over here to introduce you to Jasmine Bertels. Hello. Good to see you, Jasmine. Well done for uh, coming along today. Moneymagpie.com, amongst other appearances everywhere. What do you think you're going to hear today? What is going to be the headline at the end of all this? Yeah, I, I really hope that there are going to be some tough measures that have come along, but I have a nasty feeling it's going to be another love me, love me, vote for me kind of a budget. Um, I really hope it's not because... You know, when the going gets tough, the tough have to do something tough. So I hope that we have some swinging cuts, um, but I also hope that we have some, some big policies. Yes, a, a little bit of borrowing if we have to, some, some big policies that, that will move employment, something that will regenerate the economy. But I have a feeling it's going to be another love me budget. Because, I mean, your areas of expertise is the personal finance situation. Mm. All our personal finances are sort of... Well, we're caught in this strange set of circumstances, yes. aren't we? For many people, the actual bu the mortgage payments have gone down, mm -hmm. so a little mm -hmm. better off, but we're faced with this gloom of people down the street, people in the office, losing their jobs, yes. and there's pessimism everywhere. Absolutely, and also food prices are continuing to go up, and for some reason, petrol prices are up as well, even though um, oil per barrel has gone right down. And I think also, pensioners have been horribly squeezed in the last year. Uh, you know, savings rates are ridiculous at the moment, and really, we do need to have far more measures that will I increase uh, you know, savings. Everyone's talking about mortgages, but hey, what about savings? There, there are, are many more savers, more savers than there are than there are debtors exactly. in the mortgage Exactly, and things, they live they? off their savings. And certainly, mm. senior citizens are a bit of a problem with this because a lot of people live off a nest egg. Exactly. And now it's worthless, isn't it? well, well, exactly. Well, not worth less, no, but you know no, what I mean. It's it, worth a lot less. Worth a lot less than it was. And, and I think you know, this this is a section of the, of the population that has been forgotten for, for far too long. Of course, uh, journalists, on the whole, they have mortgages, they don't have savings. So we see in the papers and the media. A lot, an awful lot about mortgages, nowhere near enough, I think, about savings. OK. Come back to you again a bit later on. Let's sh come down the road. Charlie, I'm going to come the other side of you. A bit like serving, isn't it, at the, <laughs> at the restaurant? <laughs> Let's come this way. Charlie Parker from CityWire. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Uh, what do you think is going to be the headline out of this budget today? Well, it's probably going to be one of the figures uh, that we're going to see, one of the big figures that the Chancellor's going to have to change his own estimates on, like growth. We was estimating that the economy would shrink by just about 1%. Only a few months ago, could be more than 3% after the speech today. Those sort of figures are